The topic of climate change has recently become quite politicized, with hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on lobbying, false advertising, attacks on climate science, and spreading of disinformation to create doubt about climate change, its impacts, or to claim that it's just too expensive to deal with. While today's discussion will only be able to touch on a small part of the threats and potential solutions to climate change, I hope by the end, you'll be clear on three points. The threats to humans posed by climate change are real and immediate. Climate change can be addressed now. There are cost-effective solutions. It is failing to address climate change that will be extraordinarily expensive, both in economic terms and in terms of human suffering. Philanthropists of all kinds, even those who don't consider themselves environmental, environmental philanthropists, have an incredibly important role to play in this fight. What I'd like to do is just give you some visuals on the connections between climate and food security based on some of the work that we've been doing at Stanford and with colleagues around the world. And um, what you heard yesterday in the talk on food security is a problem where we're really worried about providing all people at all times both food availability, the pile of grain, food access, which is economic access, and then nutrition to have a healthy and productive life. And it's really the access or the economic component that is most uh, significant in this equation. And the recent World Bank figures are showing about 1.4 billion people, or about 20% of the world's population, living under a dollar a day. And then 40% of the population, which is a huge number, living under $2 a day. Solar power drip uh, panels that we've been working with, uh, the Solar Electric Light Fund, and also ICRASAT, the International Dryland Crop Research in Niger, um, have been remarkably successful. We've been doing the evaluations and the returns to these investments have been, you know, profits within, return full investment within two years. The internal rate of return, return on investment has been 45 to 65 percent. It's just been phenomenal so far. So we're expanding our evaluation of these projects. But what's really neat about it, I think the last panel talked about how resilient are you going to be to climate change. There's a lot of water in Africa in very distributed pockets. And this investment is big for a small holder you know, in Africa. It's about $10,000. But we've been organizing it around women's groups where your uh, 35 to 50 families would be involved. The cost can be shared. The said with climate change, we have we will have three things. We will, we will mitigate some of the climate change. We will adapt to some more of it. And we will suffer. Mitigation, adaptation, and suffering. Those are the choices before us. We're going to do all three. And the question of how much of each we do depends on the policy choices we make, both on the mitigation and the adaptation side. We spend globally $5 trillion per year on energy. That's a very big number. Total philanthropy in this space is about $300 million per year or $400 million per year. Nobody knows exactly what the number is. That's a 17,000 to 1 ratio, right? So we think we're powerful, and we command these vast resources in our philanthropies. But look how big this is our annual cash flow. And I would argue, therefore, that leaves you, that forces you into the policy realm. We have to steer the cash flow from PG&E. We have to steer the cash flow from the oil companies. We have to steer the cash flow from, from governments, from refrigerator appliances, to ever greener choices. If we don't steer that $5 trillion, we're not in the game.